Hello everyone! I'm here at the Gresford Miniature Railway to meet some mini steam trains. These trains are exactly the same as real steam engines, except much, much smaller. But that means they're really fun to ride on. The mechanicals didn't want to come with me today. They said they only want to see big vehicles. Those silly mechanicals don't know what they're missing out on. This is David and he's a model engineer and mini train driver. This is his locomotive and it's called the Royal Air Force. It took David 12 years to build this special locomotive and today we're going to send it whizzing around the track. This part is called the tender and it's where coal and extra water can be stored. Now that David's train is safely on the track, it's time to transfer it onto a steaming bay. This is where the fire inside the locomotive can be lit and the boiler gets filled up with water. This process is called steaming up. First, David uses this pump to fill the boiler with lots of water. The boiler is inside this part here. More water can then be poured into the tender to keep the boiler topped up when the train is running. And here's one for you, Gecko. Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Next, it's time to fill the firebox with coal. David has soaked these bits of coal in a liquid that makes them burn much faster. The fire is then lit from underneath the firebox. David builds the fire by shoveling more mini pieces of coal into the firebox. As the fire heats the water in the boiler, the pressure builds up and has to escape somewhere. And... Whoa! There it goes! A quick oil around the parts and cylinders to keep everything moving smoothly and we're ready to go. David's friend Paul swings the track over and it's full steam ahead. Coal is the fuel for this steam train and David needs plenty to power the train around the track. A quick stop at the coal store to load up the tender to make sure we have enough coal for the day. To let David's train onto the main track, Brian here needs to change the points. He checks no other trains are coming, pulls these levers and the track magically moves all by itself. Green means go! Woo! Now David can whiz around the track. I can't believe the mechanicals are missing this. It looks so much fun. So, David, how do you drive a mini train? Well, first of all, you need coal for the fire. You put the coal into the firebox and uh, 
that makes the fire and the fire boils the water in the boiler and the steam from the, the boiled water is then taken off down to the cylinders which drives the engine and this lever is called the regulator and we just turn that and then the engine will start going forwards. Hey, mechanicals, have you been here all along? Do you want to have a ride? David, the mechanicals are so excited that they're letting off their own steam. Come on, mechanicals, jump aboard. Mechanicals love these mini trains almost as much as these children. Well, Mechanicals, did you have fun after all? Thanks so much to David and all the model engineers at Gresford Miniature Railway for teaching us all about these amazing trains. You can watch more videos from me by tapping here. And to subscribe to my channel, just tap here. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy? Can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here, and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tyre with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, 
we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night, and it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water and it even has its own air supply just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. 
then it's out to the helicopter to fly. On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process from call to flight takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start. Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa, I can hardly stay on my feet. Red Mechanical. Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? As the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills using a dummy instead of a real person. The pilots skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done team! Back at base the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 Search and Rescue Helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps. And the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. And as you can see, as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera, which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself, and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely, and the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here, down through the ramp itself, off the aircraft, into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay, this is the cockpit of the helicopter. There are two pilots, one sits here in this chair, and the other one sits on the other side. These are the controls to fly the helicopter. This one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards, and this one moves it up and down. And then there's two pedals down on the floor as well. And that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens. And then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. Thanks very much to the amazing team here at the Coast Guard base. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors.
tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tire with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go. The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, 
Do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. Hello everyone, Gecko here and I'm at the RNLI Hoylake to meet a very special type of tractor. This is a launch and recovery tractor, which means its main job is to take this huge lifeboat down the beach and launch it into the sea. These RNLI lifeboats are really important because they rescue people who are in trouble at sea. That means the tractor needs to be able to launch the boat in super quick time. This tractor doesn't have wheels. These are called caterpillar tracks. They're perfect for travelling quickly across the sandy beach and stop the tractor from getting stuck in the mud. Even the trailer's got these special caterpillar tracks. This is called a swan neck and it's what connects the tractor to the trailer. It can go up and down when launching the boat. And look, up there is the cab. That's where the driver sits. He climbs up a ladder and hops in. Look. The amazing crew of the RNLI are launching the lifeboat right now. The tractor's pushing it out of the station and down the ramp to the beach. Wow! Look at it move along the sand. It's really fast. I almost forgot to tell you, this tractor's amazing because it can go under the water. No water gets into the cab because it's totally sealed, a bit like a submarine. Look how deep it's gone. The driver lifts the swan neck which tilts the lifeboat. Then the boat just slides off. Hooray! The crew of the RNLI are volunteers. They give up their free time to save people who are in trouble, which means they also have to do a lot of training. After the training exercise, it's time for the tractor to come back into the water and recover the lifeboat. The lifeboat's very strong and it's designed to hit the beach at speed. This is the winch. The crew attach the rope from the winch onto the lifeboat. The swan neck tilts the trailer and the winch pulls it on. Amazing! Wow, that's like magic. 
the trailer can spin the boat around in a circle so that she's facing the right way out to sea for the next rescue mission. The crew are also launching a hovercraft today. A hovercraft is an amphibious vehicle. Do you know what amphibious means? It means something that can go on land and in the water. This is Chris and he's today's hovercraft commander. Great to see you Gecko, coming into our lifeboat station. It's amazing inside this lifeboat station. There's so many huge vehicles that are all designed to rescue people who are in trouble at sea. Gecko, would you like to join us on a hovercraft training exercise? Oh yes please Chris. To stay safe, warm and dry, the crew have to wear this safety gear. The helmet is actually called a gecko helmet. Can you believe it? It's a real team effort to launch the hovercraft. Push team! The hovercraft is very heavy, so a big tractor is used to tow it safely down to the beach. Then, it's all hands on deck to unclip the hovercraft from the trailer and pump up the inflatable sponsons which help the hovercraft float on water. Then the pilot uses the engine to glide back onto the beach. Hooray! Wow! Look at all of these levers and switches. It all looks very complicated. Nick is the pilot and it's his job to fly the hovercraft. To start the engine, Nick turns this key. We can't see them, but underneath the hovercraft are two fans which blow air downwards. This fills the skirt with air, making the hovercraft lift off the ground. Wowzers trousers! The big fans at the back are called the thrust propellers and these push the hovercraft forwards. When Nick moves this lever, the rudders at the back move. It's these rudders that steer the hovercraft left and right. Nick makes the fans move faster and the hovercraft glides forwards. Woo, that is amazing! As commander of the hovercraft, it's Chris's job to check all around and give Nick instructions to help him fly the hovercraft safely. It's so fast and it's so noisy. Now I know why these gecko helmets have microphones and headphones built into them. They allow us to talk and listen to each other. It feels like we're floating across the sand. And just like that, we're on the water. This hovercraft is amazing. Now time for me to hop off and let the crew do their training exercise. The RNLI is a charity set up to save lives at sea. And these training exercises help the team here get ready for real life search and rescue missions. So to be as prepared as they possibly can be, the team practice, practice, practice. Today they're practicing how to rescue someone who is stuck in the mud.
playing in deep mud near the sea can be very dangerous, especially if the tide is coming in. Now that's what I call getting stuck in. Tides are the rise and fall of the levels of the sea. This is something that's happening all of the time, which means that if you're stuck in the mud on the beach, the tide might come in and surround you with water. It's very important to respect the water and make sure you check when the tide is coming in to make sure you're safe when you're at the beach. Well done team! Another successful training mission. Oh dear, it looks like the mechanicals haven't checked the tide times and they're stranded on this island. It looks like there's a storm coming too. Luckily, the hovercraft is the perfect rescue vehicle. Jump aboard mechanicals. the hovercraft is. All that whizzing about in the sand and sea is dirty work. Every time the hovercraft is called into action, the RNLI crew take great care to make sure it's cleaned up and ready to be used again. Here in the nice dry lifeboat station is the perfect place for the hovercraft to sleep for the night. Thank you very much to the fabulous crew from RNLI Hoylake for allowing me to spend the day with them and their amazing hovercraft. It's been absolutely brilliant. I'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!